For my first time doing brake lines, I think those turned out really nice. Welcome back to the Decent Garage. We are back working on Long Bed Larry today. Long Bed Larry is a truck we picked up a year ago from Boise, Idaho. It's a Long Bed Crew Cab First Gen Cummins with a 12 valve P pump, five speed, four wheel drive chassis, and we're building it on the channel. We've got a lot of little things we gotta get done on the truck today. So I don't know what order we're gonna go in, but we're gonna get our blocks installed with the U-bolts. We're gonna get our transmission mount installed. We're gonna run new brake lines up to our brake proportioning valve. And I also wanna bring in the fuel tank I have and see how we're gonna mount it. Um, I think it should be pretty easy, but I think the fuel tank straps I have are from a second gen, so we're gonna check that out. So I got brand new U-bolts, here they are. Now stock U-bolts on these trucks are 9 16th diameter. I got 5 8 so just a little bit thicker. So we gotta get the shock perches, uh, drill them out to 5 8 so that the U-bolts go through there. So let's get the frame lifted up and get these U-bolts installed. All right guys, that turned out really nice. There we have the three inch block, the spring perches, the new U-bolts. Another thing, I didn't torque these U-bolts down because U-bolts uh, are designed to stretch a little bit when you torque them down. That's why you're never supposed to reuse U-bolts. Once they're stretched, they're not gonna stretch again. So I'm not torquing them down yet because I was thinking of something and I can't remember, but there was a reason I thought I was gonna need to un undo them. So I'm just gonna leave them you know this tight for now and uh remind me when we get ready to drive this thing to torque these down if i haven't done it yet all right now that we have the springs on we can move to the next thing also don't worry i will be painting the axle it'll look nice it'll match the springs and everything now we need to put the transmission mount on so we can get that block of wood out of there and then we can get our t case hooked up to it so first thing i noticed the transmission is not right in the center. So I'm gonna loosen the motor mounts, jack it up a little bit, see if we can finagle it that way. And then I'll show you the mount that we're using. It is a sweet mount. Bingo, the ratchet strap did the job. So now we do need to jack it up though to get the new mount in. So here's the mount I'm going with. This again is another Charlie Pitcher design. Such good product, really beefy. Um, I ordered the hardware to be included with it. So I've got the hardware and then I ordered some bushings. I believe I got these off Amazon, I don't remember, but uh, got those so we can mount this up and get the transmission sitting on it.
All right, I've got it on there. I, I didn't tighten these down all the way because there's a little bit of play in here. So we're gonna get the transmission right where it needs to be, bolted in, and then we'll tighten these down. All right, guys, the setup looks a little different because I got the mount put in and the transmission was about a half an inch too far back. So I hooked a strap around here all the way up to the front of the frame, tightened it up, pulled the holes, set up forward a little bit. Now it's where it needs to be. I might pull it just a little more, but then we can drop the transmission and then we'll take the tension off the uh, ratchet strap. Alrighty guys, whoo, we got that in, fits perfect. So that's just some of the kinks you have to work through when you're putting, you know, a motor and transmission and you really have to adjust things, get them to sit in right, but we've got it in perfectly. I'll show you a better view of this mount. But yeah, this thing is awesome. And you can see he makes it so it has the correct angle because the engine doesn't sit level, it sits angled. So he makes this so that it sits at that correct angle, which I've never seen another aftermarket NV4500 mount do that. So something random that we need to get done, we have to get Lieutenant Dan out of the garage. We still are not moved back into our house after the flood. They're just about to start the reparations on that, so it took a long time but we need the space in here to put some of our stuff because they're gonna redo all the floors. So we're gonna get Lieutenant Dan out, park it over by the trucks. I'm gonna put the hard top on it and the hard doors so it's pretty much protected from the weather. So uh, let's try that. All right guys, we got the Jeep moved out, uh, got the top on it, the doors on it. My buddy came over, helped me get those on. But it's gonna sit here until the house is fixed. Uh, my wife is going to be happy that I got this done today so she can start moving stuff into the garage. So there's old Lieutenant Dan. Looks so cool with the top on. Don't worry, next summer, we will paint the top and doors to match. All right, I've got the fuel tank that came with Long Bed Larry when I bought it. Um, it has a fuel sending unit, I just took it out. So I wanna see if this fits in here because I wanna say the guy I bought it from mentioned it was a second gen tank and he was gonna modify it to work. So I'm not sure what it is. So we're gonna see if it'll fit. I know I'm gonna need new fuel tank straps because he sent these with it and those I believe are not the first gen ones. Anyways, let's see if it fits and then we'll know what we need to start looking for to get it to fit in there perfectly. Well guys, it fits and just looking at the straps, I think we can make them work. So what I'm gonna do, we're not gonna mount this yet. Let's run some brake lines. I gotta clean the tank up. Once we got brake lines and uh, maybe some wiring ran, we'll mount this up. But I'm super happy to see that this fits. This is the correct tank. Now I'm gonna admit right now, I have never done brake lines before, but I think I can handle this one. So in the rear, we've got the line that comes from the passenger shoe over and it's been broken off so we'll probably make a new one of those the driver one is just fine this right here comes up to go in the frame rail so we're going to run that line we're going to run the line from the frame rail all the way up to our brake combination valve which we're going to mount and then that'll go up to the master and then in the front both the lines to both uh, disc brake sets are good but this line right here 
coming up to the combination valve is no bueno, so we're gonna make that one. So this shouldn't be too hard, I'm hoping. This is another quick plug to remind you to go to decentgarage.com to check out my merch. I've got tons of stuff there, hats, shirts, keychains, lots of cool stuff. Remember, you get free shipping on any order, but you have to put in the promo code FREE. At the top of the website, it says that as well. Free shipping on any order, no minimum purchase. The program I use to run the website doesn't let me automatically give you free shipping. So make sure to do that. I appreciate all of you who have ordered in the past couple weeks. Fills my heart with joy. So let's get back to the video. All right, so I got my brake flaring tool right here. These are some connectors I'm gonna to use to basically mount, mount it to the frame, make it look really clean. Here's some of the outer stuff that I'm gonna put over it, again, so it looks clean. And then here's the brake line I got. I got 25 feet, which should be enough, I'm hoping. And the brake line came with all the fittings that we're gonna need, hopefully. All right, you can see my flare, maybe. So it took me, I actually cut this off probably three times and kept trying over and over till it started looking really good. But that is, I think as good as we're gonna get it. you guys we got it all put in there it is into the connection block there's the front line goes right down there and then the rear line obviously runs in the frame rail there were some clips already in here so it runs up the frame rail comes right back to here all secure I had enough brake line for this rear one but I didn't have enough of the the stuff that goes over it. So I'm gonna have to get some more. I actually was like, oh, I'll just try and reuse this line. So I came in, cleaned it up, did the crimp fitting and stuff, and realized I forgot to put the fitting on. So stupid mistake, but I'll just order some more of this stuff and I'll get that taken care of. So we got a ton taken care of in this video. All little things, but all things that have to be done in order to get this truck ready. Next video, let's attack the fuel tank, the fuel lines. Uh, the wiring harness to the back, uh, and whatever else we need to do at that point. Hope you guys are enjoying this series. We'll see you guys in the next one.